Good evening. Let me begin by thanking our black law students for coming to the city of Detroit for your 40th anniversary. Let me acknowledge a person that I have admired for many years, someone who was there at the very beginning, someone who has been in the struggle for a long time, someone who cares deeply about the law, the founder and first president, Mr. A.J. Cooper. Forty years is a long time. I was teaching in the Detroit Public Schools and going to law school at night when BALSA was founded. I've been a lawyer for 38 years on June 11th of this year. And on June 17th, my wife and I will celebrate our 41st anniversary. For those of us like AJ and others who are long in the tooth compared to those of you who are law students, I look back with the changes that have occurred since we were in law school. I think about what is open to you today that was not open to us when we were in law school and getting ready to come out and to graduate. I graduated in 1970 just three years before we had a riot in the city of Detroit. There were places in this city that we could not go. There were outstanding giants in our legal profession, as there are in the states from which you come from, where lawyers who we are all privileged to stand on their shoulders Many attacked, many of their homes bombed as they sought to open up the doors to give us an opportunity to acquire a good education. And to those of us who had the desire to pursue law school. And when we graduated, there was not an opportunity to really go to work for corporate America as we have Chris Johnson who is sitting there as a vice president and general counsel of General Motors domestic. We have come a long way. Chris, stand up to be acknowledged. While I was in law school, I had the opportunity to go clerk in a law firm that was headed up by Damon Keith, who is now on senior status at the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. They were in the Guardian building here in downtown. And I remember going to the Wolverine bar meetings and hearing from lawyers who could not, at the time, even get office space in the Guardian building lawyers who were black lawyers at the time, the first building that they go, could go into downtown Detroit was the Tobin building. The lawyers that I knew that were practicing law, that were representing their clients, many had to start their practice working in the post office or working for an automobile company during the day or the evening and try to practice law on the side until they could build their practice up because we would not go to them. Our own folks would not go to these lawyers. 
And when you think about what occurred across the country, where the likes of Thurgood Marshall, who was going into the South to work with other outstanding lawyers in their hometowns and in their home states that were representing those of us who wanted the right to have our children educated or wanted the right to go vote. And they wanted to get rid of the poll tax and the like. Thurgood Marshall riding in to the city that he was invited to, laying down in the back seat and if invited to spend the night at somebody's home, sleeping on the floor at the insistence of those who had invited him to stay because they did not want him to be injured because he was under such threats. And those lawyers who practiced in those cities and when they had county courthouses that had the law library, our lawyers could not go into those libraries. I've been privileged to be president of the American Bar Association, an association that, as J. Clay Smith wrote, who was a prolific writer, former dean of Howard Law School, wrote that in 1908, there were three colored lawyers who were found to be members of the American Bar Association. They promptly rectified that mistake, and anybody who had to or that desired to join the American Bar Association had to fill out an application that disclosed your ethnicity. And if they did not know you and did not recognize the name on that application, lawyers would go to that law firm to look in the face of that person to make sure that they were not admitting any person of color into the American Bar Association. And that was just to be a member, not being a committee chair, not being an officer, just to be a member. But thanks to the hard work of so many who came before us, you think back to the work of so many people, white, black, Christians and Jews who rode the buses, who were spat upon, who were killed, who gave their lives to give you every opportunity to succeed. And also for me, I want to thank you again for coming to the city of Detroit. I want to thank all of you who are active and participate in Balsam. I want you to reach back and to give back by encouraging other young people to get a good education, whether they want to become lawyers or not. But we do need to fill up the pipeline so that we can do a lot on behalf of the people that we love and respect. And finally, let me close with the obvious. We all really need to work together. If you saw the series Eyes on the Prize, and if you read anything about the civil rights movement, you will know that it was not all people who happened to be black. There were whites, blacks, Christians, Jews, everybody working together.